calling Renzo Wellington, 12-21-2017, at noon. Hello. Hi, Renzo? Yes. Um, Detective Chris Wagner from Carver County in Minnesota. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh. Is this a better time to speak with you? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, very good. Well, I appreciate you sp uh, speaking with me. I know that we just spoke briefly yesterday, um, and you confirmed that you um, were working security. And so I was just wanted to try to see if I could get some more information. And um, okay. that that number. Um, well, first of all, can I get your full information, your full name and, and date of birth, just for our records? Okay. It's, I'm sorry, it's Detective Chris, and Chris is with a C. C-H-R-S. Yep, Wagner, W-A-G-N-E-R. And I'm with the Carver County Sheriff's Office in Chaska, Minnesota. Carver? Carver County. C-A-R-V-E-R. Uh-huh. Carver County. And that's in said yes. In Chaska, Minnesota. Yeah. My, my desk number, I'm calling you for my cell phone because I'm not able to call Canada on our desk line. <laughs> so, um... But my this is my cell phone number nine five two four five seven six four seven five. But my desk number. Do you want my desk number also? Oh sure. It's nine five two three six one one eight seven five. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. You need a nine. Yeah. April five. April five. Okay. 1963. Okay. And what's your middle name, Renville? Lloyd. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you had told me yesterday that this number, this 929 number 2560726, used to be a number that you used to use when you used to work in, Minnesota, or in the United States, but you don't. Yeah, I still have, I still have the number, when I'm here in Canada, phone is off, and really now with the plans we have here, okay. I just use this phone world right now. Okay. Well, I left you a message that you can probably disregard on that number asking. Oh, okay. okay. It went straight to voicemail, so... Yeah, the phone, the phone is usually off, and I just use it as a backup phone. Okay. How long um, have you worked for Prince? Oh boy, it's been sporadic because I do have other jobs, so it's off and on. Okay. Um, the first one I worked for him was his Welcome to Canada tour back in, that may have been... That's fine. I can look it up too. But that was, was it a couple years ago? More than a few years? Um, you're looking at 2013. Okay. And so when he would do shows in Canada, was that primarily um, when you would assist or was it also, and I know the recent, um, you had said yesterday you were in Atlanta on, in April of last year also? Were you, were, 
Did you travel a lot with him? Again, it was sporadic. If okay. they needed somebody, I may get a call or may or may not get a call. That's just the nature of the business in, right. on, in a whole, right? Right. So. Okay. So, um, you would work with Kirk Johnson then primarily? Or would he be your contact? Or was there somebody else that you would go through? Uh, primarily, yeah. Okay. Um, in your time, did you see anything that, um, obviously, you know, our investigation is into his death and trying to determine um, where he may have received or obtained any of, of these um, opiates? And so have you seen anything during your travels with him or anything suspicious? Or? No, no, that's why I'm very surprised because I was supposed to see him in a few days. You know, after the Friday trip, okay. and it was my wife that brought to my attention that it's on CNN. That's what got my attention. Okay. Um. So when you would um meet, like, so for Atlanta, were you in a motorcade? Was how many? I guess was there how many vehicles were there? Was there only two, or was there more than two? There would only be. I'm trying to recall what to get my wires crossed. The last incident with him, the last uh, meeting. Yeah, it would have been April 14th. Right, so that would have only been uh, two or three, and I'm just trying to recall the FBO, how many car cars we had pull up. I think it would only been two or three because it was only him doing a solo tour, per se. Okay. When the band's with him, it's obviously a, a much larger uh, entourage. Um. And then, how does how does that work? Um, you arrive at the airport and meet him in. Correct. Okay, and so then do you go directly to? Um, the show, or do you make stops, or do you, you know, pick things up for him? Okay. And so that night, were there any stops that were made after the show or before? No. No stops. Okay. No, we um, we went to Atlanta. And um. So, go ahead, go ahead. okay, sorry, I'm trying to take notes here at the same time. Um, were you with him in his car, or was Kirk Johnson with him? Kirk was with him in his car. Okay, and so who were, was in your car? I'm, I'm trying to recall the motorcade. Okay. Because... It, I can picture the building, and that was the, um, picture the building, I was trying to remember the name of it, the, uh, <laughs> I think it's only get old. The Fox Theater? Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> So, was there any other bodyguards other than you and Kirk there? No. Okay. Outside of the building people. Yeah. Okay. So then this might sound like a strange question, but did you recall by chance confronting one of the pilots about their cell phone, maybe taking a photo or something? At the airport? I'm trying to identify, one of the pilots had mentioned that um, a 
party uh, bodyguard had thought that they were taking photos of Prince, and so the person had checked their cell phone. And I'm wondering, I'm just wondering if that was you or somebody else. Somebody else. That that probably would have been me, and if it would have, that may have been. Um, I can't remember if it was in the plane or in the actual FBO waiting area. Okay. So that, it that, could was have been my, that was my job, and also Kirk's my my primary one of my primary things, just to keep people from you know taking any pictures of any sort. Okay, well then it probably may have been you then. The pilot had just mentioned there was another uh, presumed bodyguard who I was trying to identify who was at the airport, and he had his phone out because they were going to text Kirk or they were going to get the number from Kirk to find out when the show was over he was going to let them know um because they and so he had just mentioned that this other bodyguard had checked his phone to make sure there weren't any pictures so that that could have been your you know this was at the venue you're saying uh he didn't tell me i think it was right at, at the airport right when okay. they picked prince up i think he they were standing outside the airport um, or the pilots were because the pilots uh, were going to a hotel to wait. He said, um, and that yeah, Kirk was. That would have been yeah. That would have been me. Okay, then that would that solves that puzzle for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, it has have you ever had any um, um, encounters? I guess where. Prince has asked you to run any errands or pick anything up for him or anything? Only food. Okay. Yeah. And that wasn't on this run. Okay. That was just a, a one-time yeah, food run. Uh, in the past, though. Maybe, yeah, yeah, in the past. The only yeah. thing I brought to him on that night at the Frost Theater was... Um, soup. One was ginger, and I can't remember what the other one was. But that was prepared right in the uh, kitchen area okay. in the Fox Theater. Okay. Okay. Do you mind telling me a little bit about what your job entails when you're doing um, that kind of detail? Sure. Okay. I, again, I am his. I call it the out of town guy. Okay. So where for this run is a uh, man in the piano. I call it tour. I arrive prior to him in whatever city. I advance the venue. I advance the vehicles. I advance the after show party venue if there is one. Because I can't. Because after I don't. So get all that done. What, when you say advance the vehicles and the show, is that just like a pre like you check everything out? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I, uh, like the vehicles. Okay. Proper inflation. It's like a circle check if you're doing um, armored car. Okay. Right. So well, we, yeah, we could call it squad good. checks, I guess, back in the day when I worked right. in a squad. <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, it's, just it's, making sure yeah, everything's right. operational, safe, things like that. Right, it's, the thing smells good. Okay. The, um, you know, the driver hasn't been drinking, he's not overweight, there's gas in the tank. Okay, you know, so okay. got it. Have to stop somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Expose him. Um, yeah, so circle check the vehicles, uh, look at the venue, make sure his room is ready, make sure there's no obstructions for an hour in. From our drop point, uh, stay in touch with the production and tour manager for our arrival in to make sure that they get no obstructions for an hour in. Um, so if there's a after party venue, same thing, liaise with the manager of the venue. Where are we sitting? Who is going to be playing or performing? Who will be serving him? How are we getting in from, you know, drop point to the seating area? Who will be serving us? Those kind of things. Okay. Then head to, head to the FBO. Get him in the uh, motorcade. Get him back to the venue and or hotel. And for this, it was just the venue. Get him in, get him on stage. So you know, we brief the in-house security on what's expected. 
um, he plays get him out of the building to either after party or after the Okay. And the way they go, <laughs> then probably the following morning, or usually a few hours from that, because we are here this morning, I fly back home. Okay. So, um, you've never seen anything, you only have gotten him food, nothing that you've ever seen was suspicious or strange no, that's circumstances. Kind of surprise, yeah. Okay. So you've never seen him take anything of that nature okay yeah. and you've never seen anybody you know i got to meet with him or or i know he was with judith hill that night um and kirk but for the most part if somebody wants to visit him um you know yeah. they go through you or kirk correct okay. both of us are either at the door and kirk knows his guest list of who's allowed in and who is not okay and that night was there anybody that you hadn't seen before or anybody that wasn't well all celebrity type people like CeeLo Green was there okay the, uh, so you know they had a little after after show meet and greet with a handful of people okay so that would be kind of hard to control who was all coming i mean they were all pre-approved people that were coming in. okay yeah yeah okay um, is there anything runville that i haven't asked you that you think would be important for us to know in regards to the investigation how do i know when it was signed um, you'll get an email. Um, oh, well, like I said, I, I was very surprised okay. that, you know, he was on any of that because, like I said, he leaves it all on the stage, right? He gives us all. Yeah. So, you know, he just may have been completely drained given that, you know, he wasn't feeling 100%, but he still goes out and gives us all. I never uh, <laughs> met... Oh, I'm sorry. I, n I never met him. He lived in Chanhassen in our county. Um, was he, was that typical for his, um, like his behavior? Was he amped up after shows or before or all the time? Or was his, what, did it move fluctuate a lot? His, no, 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 not at all. Okay. His, his mood, he's very low key, very soft spoken. It's almost like once he hits the stage, he transforms. Okay. And, you know, that was very... I, I, would, I can say the same thing about... Do you know who Gord Downey Jr. is? I mean, Gord Downey, not Gord Downey Jr. He's the actor. Gord Downey, he's the um, no. lead singer for Tragically Hip up here in Canada. No, I don't. He passed away recently. But he was the same thing. Very stoic, very stoic, soft-spoken guy. And when he hits the stage, he just transforms into this... You know, I call it this other person who's just vibrant and just connects with the crowd. And once he gets into his music, I see Prince the same way. Okay, I've actually heard that same kind of description from a lot of different people we've talked to that kind of described him the same way. That um, yeah. okay, that it was he he came alive on stage. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, um, I appreciate your time, Renville. This is my number, and I gave you my other number. If there's something after we um, hang up that, or you know, later on that you think would be important for me to know, please feel free to give me a call and let me know. Um, and if I have any other questions, do you mind if I give you a call again? No, no not at all. Okay, well. No, you get this number and voicemail here that I can pick up at any time, yes. Okay, well, I greatly appreciate your time, and like I said, I was just trying to cross off. I had this number, this 929, and trying to identify where it came from, so I'm glad I finally um, was able to meet uh, or talk with you so I could figure out those parts. So, Is there anybody you think um, that I should talk to that may have information? I said there was, it was myself, Kirk, um, is there any of his assistants, you know? Yeah. You've spoken to all of them. Right, already. yeah. We've talked to them right away. Um, all right, well, if you think of somebody that you think, if 
you know, if, if there's something that you think that I should know, that would be wonderful if you could just let me know. Okay, so I guess there's a, it's still a big question mark as to what happened. Well, I think we know what happened, but we're, um, we're just trying to find out information on where um, he was obtaining these, um, right, right, right. these drugs. So just trying to follow up with some leads. And um, like I said, I, I had your number um, and was just trying to um, kind of figure out that portion of it. I knew that number and I knew there was a person that questioned one of the the uh, pilots about the photo. So now that I know it's you, Renville, I'll put that off my list. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so anyhow, I appreciate your time, sir, and have a happy holiday. You too. Take care. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.